Well, the, the common thing is what can information technology do for society? I mean, I'm interested in science and technology with purpose. And so uh, I'm interested in computer vision, what it can do. I'm interested in robotics, what it can do for society. And the art and um, application are applications. Um, art, archaeology, physical sciences are really applications. Uh, as part of my technology efforts, I built um, uh, facilities that help to communicate people to people, uh, uh, geographically distributed, uh, who not only can talk to each other, which is the phone, and see each other, which is the tele video conferencing, but also physically interact in a common space. And that's the teleimmersion. Well, I was the founding director of Citrus um, in 2001. I was at the helm for three years. And I really tried to bring the humanities and social scientists closer to the engineers and the physical scientists. And um, I think I succeeded partially. You know, these uh, disciplines are so diverse and uh, they speak s such different language that, um, you know, three years is not long enough. But I am very proud to say that um, I certainly um, promoted much more than before what what's today is called digital humanities. So I think, um, and digital humanities involves also arts, uh, digital arts, and and use of digital media in uh, humanities and social sciences. As you know, the National Science Foundation basically gives money. And so, and wherever you have people and money, there is always politics. So, <clears throat> as much as the people in the National Science Foundation want to be, want to stand above the politics, it's very difficult because the pressures since the Congress actually appropriates the money, there is a pressure from Congress to spread the money as broadly as possible so that every congressman can say, well, I helped by voting for the budget for the National Science Foundation. I helped my local university or the local research community. Furthermore, it has been recognized that universities really are, are test beds or are bastion of uh, promoting technology, high tech, typically around universities, you know, you will have research parks, you will have startup companies, you have technological um, entrepreneurship will, will begin. So many politicians are very much aware of this and and they see that connection between the university research and spurring the technological um, advancement and business, basically, and therefore economy. So, <clears throat> uh, as I said, the, on one hand, what you have a conflict at the National Science Foundation, because you have on one hand, you want to promote excellence which leads to a certain elitism. On the other hand, you have the pressure to spread the money as broadly, geographically as broadly as possible, which leads to dilution and averaging, and uh, at the same time, everybody pays taxes, so they feel they deserve some, some 
uh, rewards and so so it's a it's a place where you really become aware of these conflicts between the excellence and serving a large uh, a broad population oh absolutely absolutely the i i find the artist extremely open to new experimentation, to new technologies. They really see this as an opportunity to try new things. And um, I find them very refreshing and much more so than the physical scientists, who, to my mind, are much more conservative in adapting new communication media, for example, or in fact um, uh, new media for visualization or, or communication of their results. And uh, it's, it's, it's a real eye-opener uh, how much the archaeologists are much more adventurous and uh, willing to try new things. Well, I think I have to give credit to my parents, both father and mother, for different reasons. My mother was a professional woman, uh, which at that time was rather unusual. She was a medical doctor, but she really believed that a woman should stand on their own. You shouldn't get married to be supported. You should earn your living. Uh, my father was an engineer, and I admired him, I adored him, and I wanted to be like him. Great. I love what I am doing, and I am very happy in my own skin. Uh, I think those are the two things. I feel I have been acknowledged more than I ever expected and I am very grateful for that. But I think if I look back over the 40 years, the most gratification I get is to see my students being successful. They are my extended family and I'm very proud of them. They should dream big. It is still in this country you can really do great things. It's getting harder, no question about it, but persistence, perseverance and be honest with yourself what do you really enjoy doing don't go just where the fade is where the, the fashion is do what what you feel is right <laughs>